Hi, and welcome to Sparkle Tart. Good morning, gorgeous people, and welcome to the Autumn Hop with AB Studio and Lindy's Gang. Today, I'm going to show you a super secret card technique that is just made for mixed media lovers out there because it means you can make the card front as heavy and as embellished as you like and it will still stand up. So come with me as I create a gorgeous mixed media card using products from Lindy's and AB Studio for the autumn hop that runs between the 16th and the 22nd of November. Plus there's some really big prizes, but you'll have to read the description or view my blog to see what those are. So let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is pick some stunning products because Really, these will form the basis of your card and it'll be really what you see. So I've got these gorgeous papers from AB Studio. They're beautiful Christmas patterns and double-sided. So you can either go for traditional colors in reds and greens or something a little bit more modern in silvers and golds. It's gorgeous. I also have one of the stunning stencils from AB Studio. This one is designed by my friend Nunika Box. I loved using this stencil. It was perfect and it looked just enough like snowflakes that it really fit with my theme. So get those things together. We're going to start with the paper elements. All right, so we're going to start this card off by cutting all of the base layers. The central panel, you'll need a nice thick piece of cardstock, and I've made mine just a little bit less than 13 centimeters square. You will then need two additional square pieces of cardstock, each a little bit larger than your base layer, to make a nice mat for your card. And you can see I've chosen a deep burgundy and a pearl. So, whatever size you make this front layer, make each layer behind it just a little bit bigger. You'll also need some of the same colors for the little foot of the card and I'll show you what I mean by that. And of course you'll need a card base. So I have made this 13 and a half centimeters across and double that in length so 27 centimeters long. I've then scored it right down the middle here so that I can beautifully and easily fold my card and have a nice neat edge. Then what I've done is scored across the middle so I create a little panel that folds. So you will need a card that is square and has a little folding section because what we're going to do is make one that holds itself up. And when I mentioned it has a little foot this bit goes on the inside, just sitting along the card edge here, and it will hold up the entire front of the card when we're finished, so it's self-supporting. So you don't have to worry about how much you put on the card, it'll hold itself up and you can decorate to your heart's content, which is what I'm going to do right now. All right, so now that you've got the base layers of the card all cut, layered, Folded. it's time to work on the pretty elements. So I've cut some of Aga's gorgeous uh, Christmas themed papers to size and the top square is slightly less than 13 by 13 centimeters and the bottom rectangle is just a hint less than 13 long and as wide as you need to make it for whatever word or decoration that you'd like to pop on top. I've used one of the uh, words from Aga's bonus paper which is joy. So I just cut it to match that size. Pop these in a spraying tin. You can just use some non-stick paper if you've got it and grab out your Lindy's. So I have Gossamer Gold Moonshadow Mist, which is a beautiful vintage brown tone with gold shimmer. I've got Lindy's Pearlescence, which has no color, just pearly stuff in there. Great way to add a bit of extra sheen if you don't want to go too crazy. And I've got Rizzo's Rowdy Red, which is a beautiful red for Christmas. Um, not quite burgundy, sort of more of a blood red color. It's gorgeous. Now I'm going to start by spraying the papers with the pearl essence and that just adds a little bit of water and a little bit of um, dampness to the cardstock along with a tiny bit of pearly shimmer. Grab that red and flick it over the cardstock. Now on the areas where the card is dry you'll get a really little circle and the areas where the card is wet it'll bleed a bit. Do the same thing with the Gossamer Gold Moonshadow Mist so that you've got a beautiful blend of red and brown vintage tones. I'm then grabbing the Gossamer Gold and spraying around 
the edges of the cardstock. This will help create sort of a border um, and give a bit of a variety to the tones here, just so it doesn't look all same same. Now, at this point I've decided to grab one more colour, which is Frozen Jack Frost. And this is one of my favourite whites because it's got some chalky elements in there to make it a bit opaque. Um, so it goes beautifully over other colours, but it also will mix a little and take on a bit of the tone of those other colours. So it's a great blending colour, great by itself, but I just love it with everything else. So I'm spraying that in the centre of both of those panels just so I can create a focal point. Um, the Joy had a few little design elements on there that I didn't want, so I'm just using the white, which is the Frozen Jack Frost, really heavily to colour some of those elements to hide them a little bit. And then adding a few flicks over my background and the rest of the cardstock. So that Frozen Jack Frost is fantastic and brings everything together. Now that the panel is dry, I'm adding some snowflake paste through that gorgeous AB Studio stencil. And I'm only going to add it to the center of the card. I don't want it to be like just sort of a flat background. I'd like it to have a bit of texture, a little bit of difference between the edges in the middle. And this will be perfect. Now that snowflake paste from Finnabar has little sparkles, little bits of glitter in there. So it's got my name all over it it's absolutely beautiful so the snowflake paste is now dry and originally I'd had an idea to have a whole lot of things hanging over the front here coming down to the little animal that I'll put in the corner but that's so pretty I actually want to leave this so you can see it it's got tiny little sparkles in there and the pattern just almost looks perfect for snowflakes now, while the snowflake paste was drying, I have colored a few flowers with some Lindy's sprays. And I've basically sprayed all of these with uh, Lindy's pearlescence to start with for a bit of uh, moisture and shimmer. And then I've sprayed the flowers with either Rizzo's Rowdy Red or Autumn Maple Crimson. Just sort of got two different colors of red here to make things a bit more interesting. Leave those to dry and they're ready to go. I've also colored a bunch of leaves, um, some of them shiny paper and some of them matte with Lindy's Drop Dead Gorgeous Green and Cathedral Pines. And I've colored them with the Drop Dead Gorgeous Green first, which is paler, and then gone over the top with Cathedral Pines. And I've got these beautiful two-toned leaves with bits of silvery shimmer and yummy gold and I've made sure that these ones had lots of water, so they're quite varied in their color. And now all that's left is for me to put all my elements together and make a beautiful card. To start assembling the card, glue all of your layers together. So the front layer with the gorgeous snowflake paste and design and the word on top of all of its layers for the body of the card. Now on this one, you only need to put some tape at the bottom and just because I muck it up a lot, I like to put tape on this side instead <laughs> because eventually when we're finished, we will stick the red card right onto the front of the white here and I've cut the red so that it leaves a tiny little white border around the outside. Just because I know how difficult it is to stick things together once they're covered with flowers, I'm actually going to apply my front panel to the base layers and the bottom of the card at this point, and then add all of my embellishments over the top. Hopefully, that'll make it a bit easier to stick everything on. Now, because that front is flat at this point, it makes it easy to stick all those layers together and get a really good contact with the double-sided tape underneath. And then all I have to do is stick this onto the front. Now it's time to add the little foot to the inside. Now, it doesn't have any decoration on the top, but you can see how that little piece of cardboard fits in and holds the rest of it nice and straight in place. And that's all it needs. And that nice heavy front that I'm about to make will stand up all by itself. So I have those beautiful flowers I colored with the Lindy's. I have some bits and pieces from Prima, a few little bits and pieces from Tim Holtz, uh, the lovely flowers and leaves, 
all the lovely leaves that I've coloured and a few bits of fussy cut um, paper from Arga's collection. And apparently I can't create a video without at least one appearance from Safi. <laughs> Alright, so at this point it's a bit of a play. So you need to get all of the elements that you've got together and just put them on the card to see where they look best. Um, sometimes I give a good thought to balance and how it's going to look. Other times I just sit there and put all my elements down until I'm happy with how it looks, which is what I've done this time. I've used a nice strong glue, which in this case was glossy accents to glue everything onto my card front and just sort of build it bit by bit. Now, if you're concerned about things moving at all, you can leave elements to dry before adding others, but I knew it was going to be just fine. Now, there's a few extra things needed. The card needs a bit of variety, so I'm tucking in a few little white buds. I've got some of that gorgeous thread from Teresa Collins, and I'm just tucking that in around some of the elements as well, tying a little bit onto my reindeer, poking it between the flowers, adding a few of those Tim Holtz elements, which is the December 25 and special delivery, and just sort of adding bits and pieces in there, so it's not one flat blob of just sort of just flowers. Makes it look a lot more interesting that way. But, as I said at the beginning, the real secret is the fold in the card. And that's what lets this super heavy card front be on a card standing by itself. This is the best thing I can show you if you are a mixed media card maker. Because you won't need to worry about the cards falling over anymore. And that happens to me a lot. I create something that's far too heavy. But, this secret fold fixes all of that. Now, I've got number 25 I've got my main image and I've got my flowers but as you can see at the moment it looks a little flat and heavy and this just looks like a red blob and it's because the flowers are not defined in any way so what you need to do to fix this um, and finish the card is define that floral area you can do this in one of two ways you can brush the tips with gesso which will just highlight the edges of the flowers um, you can add gold to the edges you could add glitter. Um, any of those things will help define the individual elements or you could add a little bit of everything. Um, you could try gold on some flowers, glitter on some others. It's completely up to you. But whatever you do do, it needs to help lift the color. So I'm going to add white. I can either add glitter or I can add um, gesso, but it definitely needs something. Now even just doing that you can see it's really raised the look of the card and has highlighted the shape of the flowers. So if I give you a closer look you can now see it doesn't look like a blob anymore. You can pick out the individual petals, you can pick out the individual flowers, the different kinds of flowers. It just gives it um, a little bit more definition uh, so it doesn't just look like a blob. Now for some glitter. All right, so I've got two colors of glitter here. I've got Stardust and Gold Dust. And I'm going to add Stardust to some of the smaller flowers and the Gold Dust to the larger ones. I think I might just only do that big one with the Gold Dust. I've got some Platinum as well. I might try some of that too. And you can see that the glitter just adds another dimension and helps define those flowers even further. That's what it's all about. If you can find a way to step it up a bit, do it. There's never too much, <laughs> especially for Christmas cards. So this is where our card is at so far and it's almost finished. Two things left to finish this off. So first I've got some of that Moon Shadow Mist, the Gossamer Gold that I used on the base right at the very beginning. I'm just gonna tip a tiny bit of that into a palette and I have a very very small paintbrush and I'm carefully going to paint around the reindeer so that it stands out a little bit more. I've also got a pot of water right next to me so that if it turns out to be too dark in any one spot I can very quickly wash some of it away or at least make it a little bit uh, lighter and that just helps highlight that little reindeer just that little bit more. Now for the very last step, a little splattery white goodness. So I've covered the areas of the card. I really don't want to end up with anything on them. And I've just got a little paintbrush here. 
and I'm just going to add some very fine splatters. Now this is um, Higgins Drawing Ink and it's wonderful to splatter with. So this will make beautiful little light splatters that will quite match the splatters on the beautiful cardstock from AB Studio. And of course this is my finished card. So now that everything is dry and all put together, you can see it in all its gorgeous glory from the sparkling snowflake paste from Finnabar, the gorgeous elements from AB Studio also who make that wonderful stencil. Thank you, Nanika. Some leaves from AB Studio, a few Tim Holtz elements. You can see I've accented and got a bit of glitter and white paint on the edges of these. So it looks more Christmassy and snowy. The little bit of brown moon shadow mist behind the reindeer just to help pop it from the background slightly. And you can really see that adding the white and glitter to all of these flowers turns that from a red blob into individual pieces. Now, if you wanted to make that more prominent, you could have done the large flower here in slightly different colors um, or even a slightly different red just to make it stand out a bit more but I love this sort of Christmassy it almost reminds me of a, a wreath the look of it so I've got the beautiful green leaves with my Lindy's um, drop dead gorgeous green and cathedral pines beautiful combination by the way and it looks different when it's on the matte card leaf compared to the glossy card leaf I love how changeable that is. I've got all my little extra elements tucked in here. You can sort of see them when you look a bit more closely. The white paint splatters, just highlighting things, little berries. Anywhere that there was a little gap, I've filled it with a tiny little bit of glitter glue. And that just helps make the card look a little bit more professionally finished. Um, so that you don't have weird little holes and anything strange going on that when you view it from a different angle it all looks gorgeous and finished because sometimes when you've got Christmas cards standing up you might see it from the side and you don't want to see bits of weird tape and sort of glue and, and yuck. Now of course the best part of this is that it stands itself up. See, there is no chance that that is going to fall over. So whoever you're gifting this to, in this case, my mum, shh, um, won't have to worry about the card falling over. So this tiny little section here, which as you can see, is just an extra fold in the card you're already making with the panel glued on the front so simple this idea but absolutely perfect for mixed media card makers so with this idea you can make that card front as heavy as you like you can add metal embellishments you can add 50 squillion heavy flowers like i've done the card is quite heavy and it still will not fall over just by this little addition of the element on the bottom here so I hope you've enjoyed seeing both the AB Studio and Lindy's Gang Sprays and Magicals in action because I thoroughly enjoy using both of these. And you know I love both of these companies. They're gorgeous, gorgeous people um, and gorgeous products. What more can you ask for? This is my project for the AB Studio and Lindy's Autumn Hop. I know it's a Christmas card. I couldn't resist. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. And what you'll need to do next is go down to the description in this video or pop over to my blog. Um, all of the links are on both of those places. And make sure you follow along to the next stop on the hop. Leave a comment. Leave a bit of love for the gorgeous design team members in both of these wonderful companies and see if you might be one of the lucky ones to win. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you loved this idea and I'll be back with more very soon. Bye.